पुराने गाने पुराने दोस्त घर की यादें और इलायची चाय उबलते पानी में इलायची चाय की पत्ती और चीनी डालें कुछ देर गैस पे उबलने दें इलायची चाय तभी अच्छी बनेगी जब आप यूज करेंगे रेनबो इवेपोरेटेड मिल्क जो बना है ताजे दूध से इसका रिच और क्रीमी टेस्ट चाय में जान डाल दे इतना सिंपल घर की याद दिला दी रेनबो इवेपोरेटेड मिल्क चाय का परफेक्ट मैच रेनबो टॉप गन सीजन थ्री हेलो एंड वेलकम टू रेनबो टॉप गन आई मोर होस्ट शेन फिलिप्स The Gulf region is famous for its oil wealth and on this episode we look at a Dubai based Indian entrepreneur who's made the lion's share of his fortune trading black gold. His father wanted him to join the armed forces but he had other things on his mind. presented by Nokia inspired by Cadillac Jag Danawa was born Jag Deep Singh Danawa his father an officer in the Indian Air Force wanted Jag to graduate from the National Defense Academy and join the services but his dad didn't realize that his son was not one to take orders Jag welcome to Rainbow Top Guns a pleasure to have you on the show with us today thank you Jack, you're actually a first for us because you're the first Top Gun to come from the oil business, and I think your father originally wanted you to join the NDA, but you ran almost literally for your life. Can you tell us a little bit about those early days? Sure. Uh, you know, we are from a small village in Punjab, and uh, my dad had a hard life. You know, uh, growing up, uh, not very well-off people over there at that time. Uh, it was a social contract. The whole family put all their resources behind him. He was a you know very intelligent guy. Uh, he studied hard, uh, did very well, and he joined the Air Force as a pilot. And he was a commander in the, the um, uh, VVIP squadron that uh, flew the first Prime Minister of India, Jawaharlal Nehru. So he's sort of you know head of the family and leader, and uh, basically whatever he said went, you know. But um, as soon as I finished school, I went to Mayo College in Ajmer. So right after school, I sat for the NDA exams, and uh, I you know sort of got in there. But I found it was not for me, you know. Few days after uh, being there, I realized that uh, for me, I need to believe in whatever order is given, you know, before following it. So it was a bit of a clash. So yeah, because so against my father's wishes, I eventually had to go out and leave NDA, and uh, then I, I joined the Merchant Navy because I figured, you know, I'd still have a uniform. Father was, you know, happy with that, and uh, they paid a stipend. So. Anyway, so that's how I, I went and joined um, on my own. I direct entry cadet in Great Eastern Shipping Company. Uh, passed the exams on my own, and uh, I joined uh, in 1974 as an apprentice, indentured cadet for three years on, on, on their ships. But I also uh, was curious about the cargoes that we were loading. You know, we loaded uh, lots of uh, different commodities on these ships, and I could see the flow. You know, where you know product was moving from some place, iron ore from some India to Japan, for example, to the steel mills. Saw these huge, big, giant mills. Um, you know, early 70s. Uh, it was dynamic uh, time in that area, that part of the world. It, it did so seed in my mind about trade. You know, the possibilities of trade, not just going and working on you know the ship and doing the normal thing. So I spent 10 years at sea, starting off with this uh, you know second mate, cadet, then second mate, and chief officer sort of thing. And then I had a, a master's license, by which time I had got married to my childhood uh, sweetheart and. Uh, and then um, our first uh, boy uh, was born uh, when i was still at uh, sea so basically i saw him when he was five and a half months old so that was it for me i decided you know go ashore and uh, try to do something different we started off very young we got we've known each other since we were teenagers got married pretty young we traveled to different countries looked for opportunities packed our bags and moving to a new country starting from scratch but there is sense of adventure in it for sure with with jack so how did you land up in dubai basically i went ashore in america you know um, and uh, i worked as a port captain and a surveyor for sgs i had to educate myself further you know i was curious of course i learned about oil business because i had sailed on tankers and, um, and you know that was the opportunity i felt that you know i could try to make a break ashore 
And so from there, I went through a series of jobs and I worked my way up to becoming a trader, you know, oil trader from operations, uh, shore operations and so forth. Then I was given opportunity in America uh, by my boss uh, who believed in me. I used to work uh, at night uh, to, uh, to learn uh, trading. I was looking after uh, business uh, for the company in um, uh, Japan, China, Korea, so forth from the West Coast. And in the day, I used to do my operations job, yeah, normal job. I wasn't paid extra for it, but I got a break. And so from there, I moved to Singapore. I worked for Japanese Sogo Sosha's uh, Marubeni's American company and Mitsui's American company, then other commodity companies, uh, Louis Dreyfus. Finally, I got a chance to come to India uh, with the Glencore, which is uh, one of the largest uh, trading houses in the world and a huge mining uh, giant as well. And they had obviously a presence here in the Middle East. So yeah, uh, we lived in Singapore for seven years prior to going to India, and then you know, and then I'm moving here. 1997, August, my family, we all moved here. I thought I could take care of Indian business from here. It was easier, much better connectivity over here, less uh, you know taxes, and of course, uh, I thought many more opportunities to do other things as well, and a lot of Indian influence. So we, we felt at home here. So when did you decide to venture out on your own, spread your wings and fly? Uh, this Petroplus uh, was this refining company that had taken over small refineries uh, from uh, the various major oil companies in Europe. And uh, they approached me to see if we could work together. And uh, the idea was to uh, source certain crude from this region for the European refineries. And perhaps there were some excess uh, products that they would uh, want to sell into, uh, into Asia, a major growing market. So I managed to get a few people uh, from the industry who knew me well uh, to join me. We set up a team over here. We set a company up here in Petroplus uh, in, in uh, Dubai, uh, Free Zone, and uh, we got going. However, as it turned out, uh, the main people, Petroplus guys in Europe, they were not so keen on actually working with us, the, the regular guys on the working level, not the management. So um, uh, I ended up with our group doing a $2 billion turnover business just on our own. So we did uh, pretty well uh, for a little while. Within two years, these guys, uh, Petroplus got taken over by a big American uh, fund and who were not so keen on the trading aspect of it. They were more interested in the hardware in Europe and the distribution network there. So I was left with this bunch of uh, characters who had, like, poor guys who had actually joined me on my word and uh, all that. And uh, you know now they were going to be unemployed. So then we set up this company, uh, uh, Tropicana, and it's, uh, since then it's, it's grown. Uh, Tropicana Group uh, is going into various other things besides oil. And uh, now the Tropicana Group has, uh, you know, um, oil terminaling uh, in India. Uh, we have a, a bulk bitumen, largest bulk bitumen uh, terminal uh, on the west coast of India in Karwar. Uh, we are into uh, logistics, uh, cold uh, chain uh, business, uh, but it's a, you know. Few, few people, you know, solid people that are, uh, we work with me now. It's been uh, more than 10 years. Jack Danawa and his family were the first to move into the plush Emirates Hills when there wasn't even electricity. But more on that story after the break. Personally, what we did, our group, we did not put all our eggs in one basket. So we did spread out our risk a little bit. So we had diversified. So yeah, so some you know, win, some lose some. Uh, there was a time, there was a lot of worry. But uh, yeah, it all came back. Presented by Nokia, inspired by Cadillac. Thakan ka ek hi upay hai, ek cup kadak chai. Ubalte pani mein thoda sa ginger, chai ki patti, chini. Kadak chai ke liye main recommend karta hoon. Taaze doodh se bana rainbow evaporated milk. Iska rich or creamy taste chai mein jaan dalte. Jaise hi badiya rang aaye, gas band kar di. Rainbow evaporated milk. Chai ka perfect match. Rainbow Top Gun Season 3. Hello and welcome back to Rainbow Top Guns. I'm in conversation with Jag Danawa, a man who's been in business here in Dubai for over 25 years and has made a name for himself trading black gold. Jag, you're one of the first Indians and even one of the first expats 
to buy a home in the plush Emirates Hills and invest in the Dubai real estate market. Tell us a little bit about that. You know, I always uh, have taken chances and uh, we bought this lot in uh, Emirates Hills and uh, then we built a home. And uh, in fact, uh, uh, a very famous architect, uh, Ashok Kurgaonkar, a watch group. Uh, he was uh, uh, the one who actually designed the place. Uh, but we as a group have had great faith in Dubai. Uh, they've always built fantastic infrastructure, uh, they're very great enablers. So yeah, we also were the first to invest in the six towers in the marina where we are today. You are bullish on the Dubai real estate market, putting your money where your mouth is, but then you get hit by the real estate crash. Did, did that deal you a punishing blow? Yeah, it was quite a setback. Uh, you know, we got carried away, like I said, uh, at the time, uh, along with everybody else. Got cleaned fact. out. Well, not quite, but we did, yeah, we made mistakes and we suffered. I mean, there was, uh, we actually uh, participated in the uh, ownership of uh, one of the islands in the, in the world project. Ouch. And yeah. You yeah. must have lost, so, what, how, much, how well, many millions did you lose there? Eventually, we had to do a lot of trading our way out of it, but yeah, it was quite bad. Keep your head up, you know, on your shoulders and you should think before you make decisions each time and, you know, don't get carried away. That's, so pre-crisis, yeah. you were leveraged no, we were oh, not well, leveraged, no, only at the top of the market. When, <laughs> first time, yeah, we also fell for it. Now what's your approach to So yeah, we're not leveraged. And we only, we, we've actually, as a group, we've uh, gone in a little bit more upstream. We try to capture more of the, the dollar, let's say. And so we are involved in property development projects in uh, Poland and in India. And uh, let's see in the future, maybe over here again. Uh, but, uh, uh, you know, we um, make sure that we are able to deliver on whatever we, we promise, you know. So yeah, but we, we are trying to, um, gone in for a little bit of vertical integration. So once bitten, yeah. twice shy, now you don't use leverage at all. Yeah, I prefer not to uh, leverage, personally. Yeah. But part of As your group, success was from leverage. Well, of course, commodity trading, by and large, you know, it's just such expensive uh, a product that uh, it requires leverage, yes. Can't do it without leverage. Yeah, sure, yeah, of course. So it depends what it is, you know. But personal, on my personal, uh, at least, again, it depends on what phase of life you're in. So I'm older, getting closer to retirement and so forth. I don't want to take that kind of risk, you know. What does it feel like when you lose one, two, three million dollars in a day? You make and you lose. No, but in Smart real estate, thing. you lost a couple million dollars. Well, like I said. What did it feel like when you lost those millions? Well, you see, who the hell expected at the time the whole world would come down at one time? However, I must say, personally, what we did, our group, we did not put all our eggs in one basket. So we did spread out our risk a little bit. So we had diversified. So yeah, so some you know, win some, lose some. And there was a time, there was a lot of worry. But uh, yeah, it all came back. I really, Real doubt, I really doubt your emotional state was so laissez-faire that win some, lose some. <laughs> oh, you come in the office. Oh, we lost a couple million on our world. No, I'm sure you were like no, not no, sleeping mean, at night, no, I, I driving mean, to the office, wondering, is the sky falling? <laughs> No, no, there was a short period when I had to kind of uh, retreat and, uh, you know, lick my wounds and uh, think up a new strategy, uh, cut off uh, loss-making things and, you know, sort of uh, regroup and come back, you know. So that's the way, you know, one has to face that. Is, that, business, the, yeah. is that the difference between the loser and the winner is that you licked your wounds and came back? That's the right. key verbiage where yes. a regular person may have just turtled up mm -hmm. and, and, you know, yeah, 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 you can't just roll over and play dead, you know. You have to think about what mistakes you've made, think through the whole strategy, you know, plan on the new things and the new environment, and then you go back and, uh, yeah, attack it once more. Well, I've known Jag for about 17 years, and uh, I remember when I moved uh, to Dubai, um, I met Jag, and he was the one who actually convinced me to, to buy my pres present house. He actually offered to, to pay for my house. And he said, you know, here, take the money and buy the house. This is the right place to buy the house. So that's how I bought the house. I think he's invested very well. He's a very smart uh, businessman with a lot of ethics. I think that's important in a, in a person. Uh, and loyalty is, is what I really care about, about Jag. As an experienced investor in the Dubai real estate market, in your opinion, are we on a bull run to 2020 or are we on the precipice of a correction? See, I think the government over here have learned lots of very important lessons from the last crash. And uh, certainly the, the bank, uh, you know, has, banks have uh, now a different way of lending. You know, they're much more careful, not so much, they don't allow so much leverage. 
and they don't give multiple loans. They, they are careful now. They don't lend money so easily. It will keep moving up, but I think it'll go slower. I don't think it'll be like those spurts of 30, 40 percent growth and all that. I don't think so, you know, in a, in a quarter. It'll be maybe more like a real realistic uh, thing. But of course, there's also inflation. As there's be more construction for all these projects, there will be inflation. Cost of construction will go up and, you know, materials will uh, become more expensive. So that's true. And there is worldwide growth right now. So, yeah. Uh, I think, uh, yeah, I would still say uh, be, invest here, but it's for investors, not for speculators, you know. What is your definition of success? For me, yeah, I mean, I, I, I want to be modest, but I have to admit, yeah, I've had relative success because I started off with 105 rupees income and, uh, of course, food and uh, lodging on a ship as an apprentice. For me, yeah, of course, there's financial success, there's otherwise emotional success. I have a, a very nice, uh, friendly and uh, happy and uh, loving family. So that's good, uh, reasonable health. So for me, yeah, it is, allows me more time to devote my pursuit of my interests. So I like travel, you know, I love travel, so I manage to get away, I do a lot more of that. So yeah, that I like, have time to, you know, indulge uh, in uh, uh, treating myself to going to concerts and, uh, you know, musical shows and plays and uh, so forth. I have more time to devote to reading, so, you know, enjoy that. And uh, yeah, of course, visiting and staying in touch with family and friends. Do you believe in luck? You know, I do believe, I'm ambivalent about it though, but I think, yes, I believe that sometimes luck plays uh, its hand, its role in, uh, in life, but one cannot blame, you know, luck for everything. Yeah? So basically you have to seize opportunity, you have to see it around you and you have to make that effort. So that's it, but if it doesn't happen, you know, then you have to kind of uh, try to change direction. And uh, having said that, once in a while, some guys do get unlucky. Yeah? You're on the wrong airplane or something. So being at the right place at the right time, uh, that's luck, I guess. What role has luck played in your own personal success story? You know, I believe in hard work. And uh, as I started off as an apprentice on a ship for, you know, small money, and I worked very hard for the my The bottom, life. you were at the bottom. Right at the bottom, yeah, yeah. So having said that, of course, I must have also had a lot of luck because after all, there's seven billion people in the world and I happened to be lucky enough to run into a few good guys who took me under their wing, mentored me and, you know, showed me the right way. So yes, yeah, luck has uh, played its part. Some people say the harder you work, the luckier you get. I agree with that. Yeah. Well, <laughs> without the hard work though, you wouldn't have had the You luck. wouldn't have that luck, yeah. You, can, you won't be able to get wherever you want to go. You have to make that effort yourself as well. If you want to grow, if you want to expand, you basically need to clone yourself. You need to yeah. have people like you who can grow the business. What do you look for when you're hiring your top people? Well, yeah, of course. I mean, I don't, the, the, I don't like to work with people that I don't get along with. That's the one big advantage of uh, being the boss rather than working for someone because, then, you know, when you have uh, the choice and the luxury of being able to pick people, you, you know, you should go with people who you really like, who you get along with, who can think like you. Mm -hmm who can take chances like you, of course, but must keep you also informed about what's happening so they don't do underhanded stuff, you know. So, yeah, I don't do business with anyone that I don't really get along with anymore. That's luxury I can afford myself. I have consciously uh, worked myself into a situation where uh, if I don't, don't like someone, I, I don't have fun with them, then it's not worth it, you know. After the break, we're gonna find out what Jag Danawa does when he's not trading black gold or trading in real estate. We're gonna look at his hobbies, so stay with us. Every one of us must strive to leave one's mark on this world and uh, don't indulge in self-pity and all that. I know sometimes things are a little hard. Make an effort, give it your best, enjoy doing what you're doing. This is one chance you have in your, in your lifetime, you know. Make the best of it. Presented by Nokia, inspired by Cadillac. This is not a phone to just capture beautiful things. This phone captures feelings. It memorizes dream machines and the goosebumps you got when they screamed. To record a jump into the unknown and relive the madness, the dry mouths, the exploding chests. Introducing the large screen new Nokia Lumia 1520 with a full HD display, full HD video recording and distortion free sound capture. Don't just record, relive. 
When you shoot for the moon, you build your courage, test your passion, and persevere. The all-new 2014 Cadillac CTS, a bold journey. गपशप के साथ तो एक कप चाय बनती है मसाला चाय इलायची लौंग और दालचीनी इसको कूट लें, उबलते पानी में डालें, इसके अंदर चाय की पत्ती और चीनी डालिए बढ़िया मसाला चाय बनाने का मेरा एक छोटा सा राज है ताजे दूध से बना रेनबो इवेपोरेटेड मिल्क इसका रिच और क्रीमी टेस्ट चाय में जान डालते ये हुई ना मसालेदार बात रेनबो इवेपोरेटेड मिल्क चाय का परफेक्ट मैच Rainbow Top Gun Season 3 Jag Danawa lives in 23 Marina, which was till recently the tallest residential tower in the world. From his beautiful apartment, the views are fantastic. We continue our conversation with a man and see what heights he has reached in his personal side of his life. Welcome back to Rainbow Top Guns. Jag, tell us about your family. Uh, well, there's my mother, she lives in Chandigarh. Uh, my father passed away a few years ago. And uh, I have a younger brother, only one sibling. He and his family live in America. He works for Xerox. Then, of course, my wife and I, we've been married 33 years. And we have three children. Uh, the eldest, Jaydeep, he's uh, married. He's 30 years old. And uh, he studied at Columbia and uh, did his MBA from INSEAD. And uh, currently, he's employed uh, with uh, McKinsey. Uh, McKinsey and Co. In, um, uh, in the States, in Palo Alto. His wife, Naseeb, she is an investment banker. And uh, then our second son, Arjun, uh, went to NYU, Stern School, did a double major in um, three years, sales and marketing. And he worked for a few years for a private equity firm in um, Delhi. And then about a year and a half ago, he decided to come and work with me. So he's in Bombay, Bombay office and uh, he's doing a great job and uh, giving me a little more time to myself because you know he takes care of a lot of burden. And then we have my daughter, Sanam, she's the youngest. She's just turned 22, just graduated from uh, Babson College, which is an entrepreneur school uh, in uh, Boston. Is the family an important ingredient in a success story? I think it's the most important ingredient. I mean, you have a good family life, good steady family, backing of the family, you can take it easy and you can, as far as that's concerned, you concentrate on your work and it's more relaxing. You can kind of shed all your worries and all that and, you know, enjoy the, uh, the, the fun of being together with the family and with love and affection and time together. Uh, my wife, in the early days when I had to really struggle and have very long hours, she was a huge support. So yeah, I think very important to have good, strong family background and family ties. What are your passion and hobbies? Because I was at sea, you know, we have a, we have a 45 foot uh, yacht uh, currently in Bombay Harbor, but uh, so we, whole family, we go out on the yacht. Uh, so that's one thing I've enjoyed. I like to go out away, you know, have a different perspective when you're looking at the land from on the seaward side. Uh, I enjoy company of uh, close friends and family, quite a few of them, luckily I can count them as real. I enjoy music, I love, uh, you know, jazz, I, I like bossa nova. Yeah, but I can listen to classical English and uh, Indian and uh, like film music. I'm not a very good singer, but I'm quite passionate singer. <laughs> I enjoy, you know, having a go at it. Can you sing us a song? Well, okay, let me see. It's a Hindi song from a movie called Dosti. <clears throat> I'll have a go. Chahunga You can't say enough about Jag. As in, they say it in Hindi, Yaron ke yaar, that is the, the phrase for Jag. He is a true friend, a wonderful human being. Through all these years that, that one has known Jag, it's just been awesome, always ready to help out, always there. So all in all, just wonderful knowing Jag. So where do you find your inspiration from? You know, I haven't actually thought about it that way, but uh, I guess, I mean, I just, I'm a creative person. I'm always trying to solve a problem and, you know, try to create something new and uh, 
find ways to work, uh, you know, uh, make things happen. And uh, so that gives me a, a kick, and I like to do things well. So, yeah, that's it. I, all the time, you must keep producing uh, something positive. You don't want to be a burden on the world. You should, you know, do something. Leave it a better place. So, as uh, Mr. Johnny said, keep walking. Is there any particular message you want to give to the youngsters in our audience? Yes, of course. Um, I'd like to say that one, every one of us must strive to leave one's mark on this world. You know, add to it, okay? So leave something, leave the world a better place. You know, don't be a parasite, you know. And uh, don't indulge in self-pity and all that. I know sometimes things are a little hard. Make an effort. Give it your best. Enjoy doing what you're doing. This is one chance you have in your, in your lifetime, you know. Make the best of it. Jag, thank you so much for coming on this episode of Rainbow Top Guns. It was my pleasure. Thank you. Pleasure was ours. That's the story of Jag Danua, a man who's always lived on his own terms. He escaped military service to become an oil and real estate tycoon. I think the main takeaways here are his fearlessness, his ability to jump in the deep end and swim, all underpinned by a Spartan-like work ethic. I'm your host, Shane Phillips, saying, Masalama Habibi. Oh, I cry very easily. I'm an emotional person. I can cry with music, uh, sometimes read a book and I, something touches a chord. And um, of course, in real life as well, yeah. I miss my father, for example, you know. Sometimes you think about these things. Yes, it purges your soul and, uh, you know, you, you, you're a real person. <laughs>